A bombshell new report from Ofcom uh, showing that the BBC now viewed as less impartial than all other broadcasters included in this survey and fewer than half of working class Brits now perceive the BBC to be impartial. I very much doubt you'll be seeing the findings of this in too many other places. Certainly the bits I'm going to be talking about here today. Uh, mainstream media seem reluctant to talk about some of this stuff. Surprise, surprise. But I'm going to bring you all the very latest in this video. So stay with me. Hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss future reports. I know you guys have had enough of the BBC licence fee. You know, you think it's outdated. You get a lot of your news here on YouTube now. And thank you so much for watching this channel. And I'm really going to go through this Ofcom uh, annual report on the BBC 2019-2020. As I said, I very much doubt you'll have seen what some of the things I'm about to talk to you about here elsewhere. Let me know if you have, though. I'd be interested to hear. So this was published yesterday, as I say. It's the Ofcom annual report on the BBC 2019-2020. There's a whole host of stuff here, so stay with me. But let's start. First of all, they find that the BBC performance tracker shows now that only 54% of adults perceive BBC News as being impartial. So this idea that we get from some who sort of turn their nose up and say, well, those that are anti-licence uh, fee or don't think the BBC is impartial or just some sort of, you know, <laughs> right-wing clique or whatever, uh, are completely out of touch here. We're down to 54%. And as Ofcom say, only 54% now perceive BBC News as being impartial. When you dig into this, there's a big class divide. And actually, when you look at the class divide on this, it is absolutely huge. So what this report shows is that when you ask working class people, do you think BBC is impartial? Fewer now than half of working class people view the BBC as impartial. When it comes to middle class people, that number is 60%, right? So there's an 11 point differential there. That's a pretty big divide. But as I say, fewer than half are working class people. And now let's uh, perceive the BBC to be impartial. Now let's look at this. Comparisons of perceptions of impartiality of TV broadcasters by their viewers. And this goes from 2017 to 2018, right through to 2019, 2020. Those that think BBC TV uh, is impartial, the number of those who think the BBC is impartial has declined in those two years you can see there and is now at 58% for 2019, 2020. The devastating, the, the, the bombshell finding that this shows is that the BBC TV, according to this Ofcom report, is, is viewed, is perceived to be less impartial than ITV on 63%, than Channel 5 at uh, 61%, lower than Channel 4, 66%, and significantly lower than Sky on 69%. So Sky actually uh, had 11 point lead there over the BBC on the perception of impartiality. And as I say again, BBC TV now viewed as less impartial than ITV, Channel 5, Channel 4 and Sky. Every, i.e. every other channel they asked about in this report. This is absolutely devastating stuff. Some of the other uh, findings that I doubt you'll hear about much elsewhere in this Ofcom report. The Ofcom say the reach of BBC News to lower socioeconomic groups, i.e. working class people, has dropped significantly in recent years. The reach of BBC News sources to audience within the DE socio-economic group has fallen substantially from 71% two years ago to 63% this year. That's in two years. For the past three years, they say people in the DE group have given consistently below average scores for every aspect of the BBC's news provision. And when it comes to younger people, I mean, they get some really startling findings here. The BBC is still struggling off some, say, to reach and retain younger audiences. Well, of course, they've got huge other alternatives like right here on YouTube. Why on earth would you want to give a compulsory fee to the BBC when you don't, and you're completely disengaged, you don't use any of their services? This cannot go on for much longer, surely. Let me know what you think in the comments. What the Ofcom also find is that for the first time, satisfaction levels among audiences who typically use the BBC the most, have been most satisfied with the BBC, are beginning to show signs of waning. Now, Ofcom say they continue to have concerns about the BBC's approach to identifying less satisfied audiences. They, the number of people engaging with the BBC has continued to fall across nearly all BBC services and at a faster rate among young people. They say the BBC's a reach remains high, but it's declining as audiences are drawn away to online providers. And they say 
There is a risk that future relationships with audiences could be jeopardised if audience concerns around impartiality continue to grow. When we talk about the BBC's audience, just look at this yesterday from the BBC's a BBC News press team. They put a they responded to a Sun story and saying the reports online in the Sun about Question Time audience numbers are untrue and the figures are wrong. They say that Question Time achieved a healthy 1.3 million viewers on the 1st of October and 1.4 million on the 19th of November. A great performance, they say, by the team, given the pressures of the pandemic. So one of those numbers there, 1.3 million, they say, is a great performance, right? This is the BBC. 1.3 million viewers on the 1st of October. If you go to September 2009, Guardian story, Question Time gets 2.5 million viewers. So in September 2009, they were getting 2.5 million. Now they're celebrating getting 1.3 million on the 1st of October. That's nearly a half in audience that they apparently say is a great performance. Now back to this Ofcom report, the overall audience they say to the BBC One has dropped by 5.4 percentage points uh, since 2000, uh, 2017. They say while it's reached the 16 to 24 year olds has dropped by 9.4 percentage points in the same period. The average daily time spent with the BBC dropped by a further 10 minutes to 2009 compared to 2018 and by 19 minutes compared to 2017, a fall of 12%. They also say over the past three years, the younger audience's average time spent with the BBC each week now stands at just less than an hour a day, down 22% since 2017. And they say that national commercial radio services have increased listeners aged 15 to 24 by 10% over the past three years, while the BBC's network radio services have lost 12% of their 15 to 24 year old listeners, less than a quarter of the time that 15 to 24 year olds spend listening to online radios with the BBC compared to 43% for national commercial stations. And finally, news on BBC TV channels reached 21% of 16 to 24 year olds a week on average in 2019. Uh, that's all that the BBC TV channels are now reaching. And I've come find that the weekly reach of news on BBC One has declined from 65% in 2010 to 53% in 2019. So there you go. Trust in the BBC is falling. They're ranked bottom on impartiality in this Ofcom report. It's further evidence, I'm afraid, that the, 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 the idea that the licence fee can go on as it is, is absolute lunacy. I think it's pretty much inevitable now that at some stage the licence fee will have to go. The audience is falling. The reputation of the BBC has fallen. But let me know what you think in the comments, guys. Do Are you surprised by any of these findings at all? What do you make of these numbers? And have you heard any of this elsewhere? Because I suspect that you haven't. But let me know if you've seen any of these facts and figures from this new Ofcom report uh, talked about or, or shown elsewhere. I'll put a link down in it uh, below so you can go and have a read yourself. But if you've enjoyed this report, guys, if you found it helpful and informative, please give this video a big thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. And of course, as ever, thank you so much for watching.